Uh, welcome to Center of Maths uh, basic series on real analysis. Throughout this series we're going to talk about some basic concepts such as convergence sequences, completeness of metric spaces, uh, sequences of functions, derivatives, Riemann integration, interchanging limit operations, and partial differentiation, and some of the basic properties of these topics. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about convergence sequences. So. So uh, in a metric space, and given a sequence of points in our metric space, we say these points have a limit or that they converge to this point P. Uh, if uh, we can find some positive integer n, such that uh, any P of little n, any little n greater than this big n, uh, will imply that the distance between P and Pn is less than E, where E we can choose to be any real number, as any positive real number, as close to zero as we want. And so this is really just saying these uh, points in this metric space, they get as close as we want to this point P. And in that case, P is the limit of that sequence, and uh, we say the sequence converges in the metric space. Okay. So something we can prove is that every uh, converging sequence has at most one limit. So uh, we can prove a sequence of points in a metric space can have at most one limit. And so the intuition behind this is if we had two limits, this would, and these are two different limits, some distance apart. So if we were in like Euclidean space, having more than one limit to a sequence would imply we have a sequence getting infinitesimally close to two different points, which seems absurd. And to prove it, uh, assume we do have two limits, say the distance between these two points is some e. Uh, and then because it's a, we're assuming our uh, sequence converges to do two different limits, we can find n and n prime such that little n greater than n implies one, the distance to one limit is less than e over two, and same with little n greater than n prime. And uh, using these two, we can have a contradiction to the triangle inequality, which is valid for any metric space by one of its axioms, and so uh, therefore by this contradiction, we can't have two limits, and so we have at most one limit. So uh, some things we can prove, some basic properties of these uh, sequences. If we have two sequences, Pn and Qn, Qn uh, converging to P and Q. Uh, we can prove the limit of the sum of the two sequences converges to the sum of the limits. We can prove the limit of the product of these two sequences equals the product of the limits. And if Q, of n, uh, Q and Q of n are never zero for all positive integers n in the sequence, then the limit of P of n over Q of n is equal to the uh, P over Q. Also, one important thing to note, uh, we're working with real numbers here. The distance is just the absolute value of the difference between two numbers. And so uh, uh, to prove a sequence converges to uh, a sequence of real numbers converges to a real number, we prove the absolute value of the difference between you know, P of n minus P gets as small as we want. So uh, for the first uh, part, uh, we're going to show P of n plus Q of n minus P plus Q, this gets as small as we want. So rearranging a little bit, using the triangle inequality, we'll have this is less than or equal to absolute value of p of n minus p plus q of n minus q. But since both these, we know p of n converges to p, q of n converges to q, so we can find some n, such that little n greater than n implies both of these are less than e over two. And so this whole thing will be less than uh, e. And e is any uh, number greater than zero.
So uh, one thing, it's easy, it's easy to show a conversion sequence in real numbers is uh, bounded. Uh, just by looking at, uh, knowing that since it's converges some limit, that limit, uh, the open ball around that limit of some depth epsilon, some E value contains an infinite number of the points of the sequence. So after some point, it contains all the points of the sequence. So a ball containing the finite number of points outside that little ball, uh, and that ball uh, contains all the points. So it's a convergent sequence will be bounded. So showing P of n, Q of n converges to P times Q. Uh, we're going to add and subtract. We're going to add zero, basically. So this is equal to P of n times Q of n minus P of n times Q plus P of n times Q minus P times Q. Uh, by the triangle inequality, this is less than or equal to P of n times Q of n minus Q plus Q times P of n minus P. Uh, so using the fact that these sequences are uh, bounded, we're going to pick uh, m, such that m is greater than uh, the maximum of the either sequence. Uh, so we're going to make q of n minus q less than e over 2m, where e over 2 is some real number. We can get as small as we want. And so this whole thing is going to be less than uh, absolute value p of n times e over 2m plus q times e over 2m, but q over m and p of n over m, we're saying it's less than 1 or less than equal to 1. So this is all going to be less than, uh, yeah, all, this is all going to be less than e over 2 plus e over 2, which is e. And so this shows that p of n times q of n minus p times q gets arbitrarily close to p times q. So. so first, once again, uh, so q of n and q, neither, neither of these are going to be zero for any values. Uh, again, we're assuming uh, q of n is a conversion sequence. Uh, so 1 over q of n. Uh, yeah, so q of n has some upper and lower bounds. And so we're going to take our m this time to be a, a lower bound. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so we're going to manipulate these two. This is equal to q minus q of, q of n over q times q of n. This is going to be less than or equal to q minus q of n over m squared since m is a lower bound, and it's m is on bottom, so this is in fact going to be greater than or equal to our previous uh, fraction. And so uh, q minus q of n, we know this uh, converges to zero, so this we're going to say, we're going to pick n greater than big N, such that this thing on top is going to be less than uh, e times m squared. So this whole thing is going to be less than e times m squared over m squared, which is just e. And so this shows 1 over q of n. Uh, converges to 1 over q for q of n never equal to 0 and the limit uh, q not equal to 0. And so, and so by just using our previous result on products of limits, we're thinking now the limit of p of n times 1 over q of n, which is just p times 1 over q, which equals p over q, which establishes our division of sequences. Uh, thanks for watching. Please check out centermath.org, check out our blog, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you.